I'm going to use this free palette. I'm going to flip this over to the back. I'm going to cut the three main support beams right there. And then I need to remove the boards that are in the middle. Next, we're going to measure in between on the back side. I'm going to measure and cut these two boards. Now I'm going to take the smaller palette boards and those are going to be my fillers. Then I'm going to put the bottom and the top palette board together. Go ahead and take all your palette boards, put them in the middle. Then you're going to just take a screw on each side of support and put it together. I'm going to go ahead and set it right into place. And oh, I was so excited. It fit like a glove. Next step is to go ahead. We're going to put those on and look at that. Now we got to be able to secure the door so just a little eye hook right there and put that in so I'm gonna put these eye hooks in and I'm gonna use a chain now it's time to secure it to the wall be very safe when doing this but once I got it secure look at that but here comes the surprise you're gonna love this once it opens it's your little old pallet bar isn't that great I love it I can store my drinks inside I even put a bottle cap opener headed down to my local Dollar Tree I'm gonna start with these glass beads I'm gonna also head over and get some rubbing alcohol next I grab this bowl got it from Home Depot I'm gonna grab some sand, start putting it in the bottom. So you wanna fill it up to where when you get your bowl, you're gonna kinda be level with the top and it has a firm foundation. Let's go ahead and start putting some more sand in so that it holds it in place to level it out. Make sure that bowl is firm. We don't want any spillage or that thing moving when we light it up. Go ahead and put the metal bowl in and then remember those glass beads and start placing them all the way around. Take that rubbing alcohol and pour a little bit in there. Give it a little bit of a flame and it's gonna light right up. If you need to put it out, you're just gonna put a metal lid on top. It's great for just relaxing nearby. The first part is making sure that the bottom is flat and level. When you're stacking the cinder blocks on top of each other, always make sure you use an all-purpose construction adhesive. It's gonna hold the blocks together so there's no slippage or having them fall apart. On a project like this, you're always gonna to wanna to make sure you're wearing gloves. You're gonna lay and stack four of these cinder blocks together. You're gonna to do this for both sides. Always want to make sure I take my level and just make sure it looks good. Then we're going to take two more, turn them the flat way, use the construction adhesive, lay it down, and put the bricks on. These are going to lay sideways facing each other. The next thing we're going to do on the back half of the last cinder block, we're going to put some construction adhesive and lay this cinder block facing up. Now that we've got our cinder blocks in place, you're going to use a total of seven on each side. The next step is putting the wood in. And here it is, our final project. I think it just turned out great. I literally built this thing for less than $60. I've got this sad, sad area in my backyard that I really want to spruce up. Once I use that level and a board to make sure it's level as possible, I'm going to set out a base of reclaimed bricks that I had. Once I get all the bricks out, I'm going to use sand as a filler. So I'm going to put some sand down, rub it out, and make sure that it fills in all the cracks. Next, I'm going to start handing out these pavers. What I'm going to do is lay these out and get them all around the edge of the bricks that I laid out. On the next row, we don't want to lay the seams on top of each other. You're going to go ahead and mix it up and put the seams right over the next layer. Three rows is going to be perfect. Next, we're going to make a top for it. I'm going to lay out some glue because we need to make a brace to hold these together. I'm going to put these across and then I'm going to use my nail gun just to put some nails in to hold it in place. Once we get our circle all figured out and marked, it's not going to be that hard to cut it out. Once I got it cut it out, let's go ahead and get it sanded down and I'm going to need some handles. And that makes it great. So when the fire pit's not being used, it's going to be perfect. It's time to go ahead and get the campfire going. And it just makes for a wonderful, great afternoon. Go ahead and grab yourself a tomato cage. And also grab some wood shims. Grab a scrap board. Take the thick end. We're going to get a nice clean hole. And we're going to do this to all of our shims. What we're going to do is take a towel and just dip it in there. Make sure it's all covered. Just wipe it on there. The sticky points that go into the ground, we don't need those. It's just going to snap right off. Now we're going to grab us some copper wire. We're going to put that through the shim with the hole in it. Just use it like a twist tie. Go all the way around. Once you get the second layer done, we're going to grab us a solar light from Dollar Tree. Take off that small part on the bottom, the stake. We don't need that. And let it float right in the middle. Now we're going to work on that last circle. And when the night starts to fall, watch this. That thing is going to light up. And you don't even have to turn it on or off. It works its magic automatically and recharges during the day. Start by measuring your space. We're using waterproof crib mattresses, so you'll build your couch around the crib mattress measurements. Cut the pallets using a circular saw. Be sure to watch out for nails. Cut all the way across, then flip over and cut the other side. After you've cut all the pallets, 
start stacking. We used a total of 12 pallets cut to fit for our outdoor couch. Use a nail gun to attach painted plywood fronts and trim board. This part's a lot easier if you have a second set of hands. Now that the couch is assembled, you can add the crib mattresses. Ours were shipped covered in plastic, so we left that on to make them extra waterproof. Cover the mattresses with fitted sheets. These are inexpensive and easy to throw in the washing machine. Lastly, decorate with throw pillows and enjoy with your favorite furry friend. Next time you're at the thrift store, pick yourself up a couple of lampshades. To begin my project, I just took apart the lampshade, so I just began with some scissors, cutting apart the fabric and ripping it off. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this little knob back on. Then I'm going to go ahead here with a hot glue gun, just going to attach this faux moss onto to the wired parts. I came in with these solar fairy lights and wrapped them all around my lampshade. At night, once the solar lights have charged, they light up and they provide just a cool atmosphere for my backyard. We're gonna grab us an old pallet. We need to cut a section of the pallet out. Go ahead and separate it, but don't throw it away. We'll need those boards. Take the section that we cut and we need to find the middle. That is how we're gonna get our two ends perfectly aligned. Take that part that we cut off earlier and separate it and remove some of the boards with the nails in them. Just go ahead and grab a hammer and you're just going to start tapping on the back side of the nail. You're going to pull that nail right out and we're going to place them across the top of the two pieces we cut. Then I used a nail gun just to put it in place. This thing is going to be so strong it doesn't take much to hold it together. Take a little bit extra of the boards that we have left over and we're going to build a little bit of a shelf. We're not going to secure it because it's time to show you this final project. This is great for outdoor, it looks rustic, and it's great for cooking s'mores and making some hot chocolate, especially with that sliding shelf. Headed down to a local Dollar Tree. I'll grab some rope, some clear bottles, and some cool little lights. Let's take the hook off the top of the light. Next, we're going to take the bulb off. Next, we need to take the actual light mechanism and pop it out. What we need to do is paint this cover. Now on the bottle, we have a cork here. We can go ahead and just remove that. Next, I grabbed off of Amazon a bottle cutter. Put the bottle on the rollers and you go ahead and start turning it. What you want to do is hear this noise. That means you're cutting right through the bottle, but it won't cut all the way through. I'm going to show you a little cut line on there. Stick the bottle in the boiling water for a good 30 seconds. Once you've got it in there and it's heated up, immediately go ahead and put it in the icy cold water. It's going to separate along the score line and look at that. Perfect. Takes off the bottom and you've got a nice, flat, smooth line. Put the lights back through our painted cover and clip it back on. Take some E6000 glue and place it around the edge. Take some hot glue and put it in the areas I didn't put the E6000 on. That's going to hold the cover in place while the glue is drying. You're going to stick the lights inside the bottle, set the cover on top, then we're going to take that rope, stick some hot glue on the neck of the bottle, let that hold, and then we're going to start wrapping it all the way around the neck. And then take this extra twine, we're going to put it through the hook. I made three of these and we put them up. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I sure did. And we can't wait to see you again on Home Talk.